Hi all. So King Lear, um, all right, let's just play, try and play solidly in the opening, maybe a Slav type setup. And um, should I play a surprise Finchetto on that side? And I'll uh, play for b5 over here. I think I'll take that. He just dropped, oh no, we dropped a piece. Uh, so my opponent's playing very quickly indeed. Um, so it's like a one minute game. I think it's like a one minute game. But um, have I stranded his knight? No, no, I haven't. Knight takes. Maybe queen a5 is good here. Or e5. What about e5? So this guy, I think, is very, very quick. Um, but is he a blunderer? We're about to find out. So here, it looks as though tactically, you know, this opening this, you know, it forces him bishop d4. Um, so if I play knight g4 first, maybe that will worry him a bit. So I'm, I'm now reserving e takes d4. Okay, so here, I haven't got e takes, hg, d takes, have I? Just losing that piece for nothing. But what about knight h6? So I'm still reserving e takes d4. I think this this video is going to be over quick. The speed he's playing. <laughs> okay, he's doubled up rooks. So some stereotypical moves creep in. You know, like doubling up rooks when he's actually faced with something specific. E takes d4, and he's just resigned. That was so quick. Let's just start another game. Okay, I'll play French. So we might have two games to the price of one. Now um, I'll play this system. So. I know the exchange French is sort of a wind up opening psychologically as if saying to black you know am I playing for a draw or am I going to have a little bit of pressure to annoy you with so um, by playing the King's Finchetto sometimes I'm successful with it but uh, sometimes I'm not so here let's let's see if I can get in Knight F5 I think maybe one of the keys to being more successful with it is not to unnecessarily weaken myself with too early a g5 but sometimes i find g5 um an interesting move um in fact i'm I'm tempted to here just to try and undermine his d5 pawn if i can get the light square bishop then it can be tucked away on g6 securing some of my potential weaknesses um so basically here um am i threatening g4 or um, tr try and win that d4 pawn. Okay, now knight takes d4 is interesting. Knight takes, knight takes, maybe bishop takes. Um, but then maybe, you know, I've got knight f3. I'm tempted. C queen moves. Bishop takes g4. I'm, re I'm really opening my king up too much, I think in that line so what about just knight e7 to g6 to f4 but then he's got h4 so i don't know actually um could be trouble ahead here um i'll try and defend with this to play knight g6 if h4 i'll just play knight g6 anyway but then i'm losing the g5 pawn um Oh dear, what about h4, bishop takes g4, and he's got hg, then rook h8, or is it hairy, g takes f. I think I'm getting murdered, actually. It's a shame, <laughs> but I'm getting murdered. Okay, h4, knight g6, hg, fg. Okay, he's not going to want to exchange queen, so we'll play knight takes g5, probably. And then, maybe I've got rook takes f2, to try and get rid of some of the attacking pieces. Queen f2, queen g5, check. Um... Maybe I can continue materialistically winning this g-pawn. But then my d5 is going to go. The, the moment I move this knight to g6, d5 is going to go. So um, is it going to be death at the hand of death squared here? h4 does seem very tempting. Hang on. h4, bishop takes g4. Well, he's got knight takes g4. He's got hg. Can I really do bishop takes f3, rook takes h7, king g8? It's going to slaughter me, surely, with just doubling up rooks. Is that the case? I'm not sure. Okay, he's thinking about this quite kind of deeply. Uh, maybe he's thinking about knight takes g5, but I think I just take in a knight g6 and I'll be attacking his queen. 
So he's probably thinking a lot about h4 here. Unless he's been disconnected and it hasn't registered. But um, it seems to be a big, big think. So let's see, h4. Ah, okay, after all that. Okay, now surely here, oh, knight g6, h4, I've got knight f4. He's giving me a bit of time to be a bit more solid. I think um, I'll go for this, knight g6, with the idea of knight f4. So I gained a whole minute. He's like um, <sighs> treating this more seriously than my previous opponents. So here, g takes, and he's eyeing h6 with his queen, rook h4, rook h6. Am I defending that? Rook h, queen takes, knight, knight takes d5. It's not very pleasant. Um, but I think, what about taking it and then g5? I think that might be a way to play this. So White has played this exchange French with a view of being very aggressive. It's a, it's a nice little trick um, to do that. Um, now, am I in big trouble? Probably. Um, if Rook H8, maybe that's my only hope here to try and exchange off an attacking piece. Um, so if he has to play Rook H8, maybe King takes to keep protection of the D5 pawn. So at the moment, knight takes g5, maybe rook takes. There's no intermediary check like knight e6, thankfully. But then actually g takes is, is pretty um, pretty scary. So actually here, maybe my best is to just do fg, because at least my rook will remain on that file. I don't know. Um, about to be slaughtered, probably. I'll do that. Because maybe king f7 and queen f6 is going to be handy if he's going to play queen f4 check. So queen f4 check here, queen f6. I have got that h file as a resource. Um, and thankfully my bishop's on that. So, um, okay. So now he's threatening queen f4 and I've got no queen f6. So what about queen d6? Queen d6. Hmm. Queen d6, or knight takes d4. No, knight takes d4, queen f4. So do I have to keep control of the f4 square? I think so. I can't see anything else. Queen d6. I think queen d6. So, let's see. Um, well, at least I've got the h file here, so I'm, I'm a piece up as well. But uh, is he going to make me? Maybe something like rook g3 looks pretty decisive. But then maybe bishop e6, rook f3, king e8. Maybe it's not so clear. Knight f6. Maybe my king can crawl over the queen side and I'll try and win on time. Just try and get it over to the a7 square. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I don't think it's going to last that long. But he's got a minute. Is, is he going to bring this other rook in? That's the question. So bishop e6. Um, he's got queen f3. I think maybe bishop e6 is needed. Because then queen f3, maybe I just play king e8. Um, bishop e6, queen f3, king e8, queen f6. And I got rook f8 there. Okay, I'll try that. Check. Okay, so here I'm banking on queen f6, rook f8. Um not the most pleasant to have the king kicked around blitz but queen f6 so is he really threatening something horrible there um queen f6 rook f8 um actually i've got potentially i've got you know i would have had queen f4 if it wasn't for the knight okay so that i think i can deal with that because queen takes um queen takes knight e7 after and i don't i don't see an immediate checks so that seems to be good news. So I'll I'll take that I think. Check. And play this knight move. So now I've got queen f4 as a threat. And he's only got 25 seconds. So uh All right. So queen f4 and queen takes g5 protects e7. It seems. Check. So that's a bit a uh, bit of tactical luck, I guess. 
All right, so the exchange of queens just as good really because it means I've got less chance of being mated. I think just king d7 here. And I can bring my other rook. Finally, the rooks are connected. Uh, so I'll just protect the knight finally. All right, now plan rook f4, there's c3. So he's only got eight seconds. So I think basically I'll play the rook here to activate it on the seventh rank here. Um, and if I can get the other rook connected now with maybe b5 to play rook check and rook c2 would annoy him tactically and maybe confuse him um, or maybe not all right I'll put I'll keep make sure he hasn't got f6 okay now I'll take there please leave any comments or questions on YouTube thanks very much